Hi everyone, Soul Super 17 here. Let me show you some huge foot now in these pictures. Not pay video. Oh wait, I don't know in this picture, not pay video. I made the thumbnail only, blah blah blah, whatever. So, um, how's everyone's day going? Hopefully it's good. <laughs> just don't mind that noise in the background. That's just my dog moving on the couch. So, I decided to make this part two. Um, so, here's a thing, there's, um, so I am going to be making Naruto technically a one-man army. I mean, he is on boot level, so, I mean, technically speaking, he doesn't need to be on a team, it's just because they don't have any, you know, other, basically, people his age, so it's like, he's only being filled in that. But, technically on paper, he'll be a part of the team in Ambu. Um, so, it's like, it's not really going to matter. He's still a one-man army. So, anyways. So, let's just get into this video. <clears throat> As, basically, Naruto is still walking around the village. He's basically thinking about, well, Asuma's team. He goes, okay, so there's Choji and Ino. Uh, Shigamara must be on, well, Team Kakashi. That only makes sense. But, <laughs> why, why basically I'm with Eno of all people? I mean, technically speaking, it's better than with Hanata. Ugh. Her and Kiba. How can they, how can two of them get along so well? I mean, she's like Sakura almost with Kiba. Well, I mean, she just... Let's his ego go up a little bit, but she also puts him in his place sometimes. Still. Man, I feel bad for the children. You know, their children to have parents like them. Eh, maybe Hanata will change. Hmm, who knows. As in, basically, so, like, basically, Krama says, Kid, don't ever think like that. These people here don't change. Uh, besides, you're stronger than Kiba. And let's just say... <clears throat> I've been noticing her glancing at you a few times. Even been following you. In which Naruto stops. He's like, why have I never noticed? Like, he just blinks in disbelief. He's Ambu level. Ninja. As in Sauron basically says, Well, to be frank, you're always too much in thought on... Well, figure out what you need to do. And besides, it's basically every time when you come back from a mission, you're, well, exhausted from the travel. In which, Naruto just sighs and be like, don't tell me she's going to become a stalker and watch me. Which, Soren and Kurama just says, maybe. And he's like, ugh. Oh, I mean, technically speaking, eh. She's really not that bad. The Hugos are really stuck up, though. Besides, Yashi, huh, why does he always look at me and, <sighs> with sadness, but then he pretends he doesn't even care, which Karam would be like, I know stuff that I cannot tell you, yet, if I can say one thing about that man, he has tried to help you out every so often, in which he's like, hmm, tell me how. Which he just has this evil grin because he wants to go to the Hugo clan and, well, ask him where, you know, what it is that uh, this man has, you know, what has he done to try to help him. In which, well, basically Cromer says, like, well, there's been a couple of things. You know how when there's been some people chasing you and then all of a sudden you lose them very quickly, more than usual, when you were younger? And which Naruto nod, and he goes like, that was probably him. He never had the Hugos help out on your birthday or the hunt, as they like to say it. Which basically Soran says, yes. Also, I can agree with Kurama. Wait, which basically, Naruto goes like, wait. You know, you know his name? Which Soran goes, I mean, Soran goes like, oh yes, he told me. Which Kurama like, I was going to tell you today, but I forgot. I'm sorry. It was Naruto just shrugs. But anyways, he was like, so, wait, Hasashi Kuga. I mean, you know, Hiyashi Kuga. 
Eh, two different names from two different animes. I don't care no more. Basically, well, cares for me? Huh. I wonder why. Eh. So, basically, after that, Naruto's just walking, you know, by until he sees a weapon shop. You know, a Ninja Tools weapon shop with a big kunai on it. He's like, huh? Hmm. I do need a new sword, but I want to make it different from ninjas. Make a name with it. <laughs> Let's see. So basically, he enters the shop, and Ten Ten and her father's there. Which, basically, Ten Ten's just seeing Naruto, and which she's like, I've never seen him around. Which then her father's like, Naruto was a Maki, the one who owes the QB. Hmm, something's different about him. The rumors. Especially the way he acts right now. Basically. So, Naruto was just walking around the shop. He sees a few things, and he goes like, Well, hmm, I'm an Ombu. I really want really much clothing besides my regular ones and that, jump sh that jumpsuit I have. My Ombu clothing are the only ones I wear to work. I'll buy a couple of pairs. So basically, Naruto, well, he basically, basically buys Ambu, well, pants and actual, like, you could say, ninja boots and such, along with basically having um, the black shirt with, though, like, he basically buys black and gray, mostly stuff, along with just, like, because there's Kiba has a jacket, but I was also like buy some jackets and such. So, we said these are just for ninja stuff. So he's like, huh, we know I can get some fashion stuff from, well, a ninja tool area. I mean, ninja shop. <laughs> I'm always, I mean, I can't be hunted, but I always must be prepared for anything. So, so then he thinks, besides, I can alter them with magic. And so he goes over to the counter. He's like, I just like to buy these. Because that's fine. Which, Ten Ten's like, no weapons? He's like, yes, I do. But it's, um, none of the weapons I uh, want. No, it's not because it's bad. I mean, it's just none of the weapons I want is something I can get from here. And which Ten Ten's father is like, hmm. What type, of me what type of weapon? Maybe I can make it for you. Which Naruto's eyes wide. He was like, really? You do custom ones? He was like, yeah. What is it? like, well, um, how should I say this? You know how about samurais have their weapons? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, it's going to be like that. And though I want it though to be, well, I'm only like 13, so... I need it to be a light, but very, very strong for taking hits. Which, well, Ten Ten's father thinks about it. He's like, hmm, let me see in the back what I have. See if the materials I have anything. So, while Ten Ten's like, you know, telling him how much money it is, he pays it, she puts in it. He basically just, like, says no need. He basically, well, does, like, a um, sealant scroll where he just put his stuff in and just carry it around. She was like, that's handy. He's like, yeah, I mean, it's practical use. The ceiling scroll, like, well, was taught in. But, but not, not, nothing much, really. So anyways, when Ten Ten's father, you know, comes back, he goes, sorry. Um, there's, I don't have any of the material that I can use. I had to order it. But Naruto thinks, he was like, hmm... How about I just get get it for you? I mean, how fast? But how fast can you make it? In which he goes, it'll take a couple of days. Is that fine? He's like, e yeah, actually, it will be. Just as long as I can get it before well anything. I mean, I may have been on an ambu level, but technically speaking, on paper, I'm still a genin. So you know, which. They're just shocked by that, which he's like, I mean, Karama is sort of just sighed, like, you don't care if anyone knows, do you? He was like, nope. 
don't care. I can't die. And plus, it's not like the, you know, anyone can technically kill me. Which Sauron thinks about this. But then all of a sudden, when he looks at Naruto, he gets the, he basically sees a flicker on Naruto's body. Like, he doesn't understand it. And he's puzzled. So, what happens is this. Ten Ten's father's like, well, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's surprising me. In which Naruto says, yeah, sorry. But anyways, I can get the materials for you. I think I know a couple places that will work. So, um, I'll be back as soon as I can. It's only like, that basically he looks at the time. He's like, oh, wow, it's already like four o'clock. Wait. No. Maybe I say he just looks again at his watch. He goes like, uh, hold on. I'm downstairs, by the way, guys. Okay, so. Basically. As I was saying. Yeah, he just says like, oh, it's only like three. I got enough time. Then what time do you close? As I just say some random time. He's like, got it. See ya. As I want run out of the shop, which ten ten is like, <laughs> he's an ambu. And a getting. How's that even possible? Which her father just shrugs, but he goes like, interesting kid. <laughs> you know, he probably would be a better, you know, person to like than that Neji boy. In which her father leaves that her face gets red and she goes, dad. And so, in which, basically when Naruto runs, he basically jumps onto the rooftop. As then he basically says, uh, Sauron, do you think the minds of the, well, the dwarves are still working properly, or they're all mined out. In which, well, Sauron says, Here, ask the Lich King. As basically, all of a sudden, the Lich King here comes out in the shadow, in which he says, I'm sorry, no, well, Lord Naruto. They have been basically mined out for, well, thousands of years ago. Well, not thousands, a couple of hundred years ago. All their medals were used, I'm afraid. Naruto's just like, ah, okay, where else could they be? Wait, how do you even know this? And where she says, all of us have certain knowledges, I mean, that all of us have certain knowledge of the world that Sauron has given us to basically keep an, well, how should I say it, an eye on. I've been given the task on resources and well, lands, to know where certain things are that, well, the next host would have been. But you are a grave walker. You are Sauron and yourself at once. So Naruto was like, okay, I get it, I get it. So, though, he basically just says, where can the metals we even get? As Ankrama says, how about the Uzumaki clan? Which Naruto was uh, like, is basically legit. Uses magic to summon like the Karama. Major Karama then just jumps down to the regular size box Karama. He goes, Naruto what clan? I mean, not, not Naruto what clan. Uzumaki clan? Say what now? In which he goes, yeah, Uzumaki clan. You, why do you think you have Uzumaki name? I know they don't tell it in the history, well, they tell it in the history books, you remember? As Naruto like, goes back to his memory, he thinks, I do mention them a couple of times. Uh, how how could I be so dumb? That means they have all those. Mm, I have to go back to the third Hokage. Do I have to get permission to leave this? You know, he goes yes. Also, we can. You should probably ask him. Since you probably think your mom was in this village. He goes, that is true. Yeah. So basically, you know, Shadow Walt, well, basically, Fire of the Eye, you know, walked into, then also disappears and walks right into the Hokage's office, which he was like, which Haruzo was like, what the? As then Naruto's just coming out of the eye. You know, he's like, Haruzo, quick question. Can I leave the village? Which he's like, oh, Naruto, why? He goes, oh, to go to the Uzumaki clan. Well, in Remains, in Whirlpool, and what she's like, uh, um, why? He was like, just because I need to get some medals from the 
as in basically he sees Karama technically in like fox form, but not big, just like a normal fox with just nine tails and just like you know, glowing. He's like in the mountain, Uzumaki, Uzumaki, Uzi, Uzi Mountain. I don't know why they call it that. Just say Uzumaki Mountain. In which Naruto says, shorten it, and shrugged, which Karama says, makes sense. But just call it Uzumaki Mountain. And he's like, right, Uzumaki Mountain. The mine in there, for their, well, metals. You know, the rare metals in there. Which. Peruzin's like, <clears throat> uh, QB? Why did you tell him this? Peruzin asked. He was like, the kid needed a new weapon. His sword basically is about to break any minute, so I don't see the point. Why not? Just tell him. Besides, I'm going to be stuck with him for the rest of my life. Even if I am technically, well, distracted from him, this guy will probably just save me and free me anyways, but... If I die again, I'll probably just go back to him. Who knows? I'm bound to him, probably, for life. In which... Haruzen does not. He goes, I understand. So. Let me guess. You also want to... Yeah, um, my mom's home. I want my dad's. You can't tell me? He's like, your name is Naruto Uzumaki. Your father is Minato Namikaze, the fourth Hokage. And you are the son of Kushina Uzumaki happy, which Naruto goes, yes, wait, 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 what, I'm, I'm the fourth Hokage son, he goes, Sauron, and Sauron appears, like, I'm on it, as he basically slaps Naruto across the face, as Naruto's like, okay, okay, I'm awake, I'm awake, you know, uh, I'm the fourth Hokage son, why does everyone hate me? Why? And which then he looks like Karama, and then he was like, now I remember. And all these people are idiots. Which Haruzan basically like just sides me like, you have no idea. Especially the council. They want the Uchiha to pass without even trying. And they even demand stuff that's like, it's the council, the civilian. And which Naruto's like, can you just. Like, get rid of them. Like, this is a ninja village. They don't run the show. I mean, you know, basically, Haruzan sighs. You're like, it's also because of Donzo. Then he just thinks. Basically, he looks at Naruto. He looks at Sauron. He looks at Karama. He was like, do you, by any chance, think you can get rid of him? Make it like an accident? Because technically, he's the one who's been causing me the most problems. Especially with my two comrades. In which... Naruto and Sauron and Karama just look at each other and they just said, Yeah, we'll get rid of him. He's basically been a thorn on our side for a while, too. I mean... Vincent Ambu want Root Ninjas to come after me when I'm on my Ambu missions. Thinking, oh, I'm so... You know, and then next thing you know, I just summon the now schools and they decapitate them or I turn them into my subordinates. I technically have half of... Like, the root ninjas on my side. <laughs> Which Haruzin's just like... <clears throat> that domination... That dominator will... is too powerful. This is why I made you an Ambu. <laughs> and also because of, well... Your magical ability. Which... He was, which Naruto was like, wait, how do you know about... And he looks at Sauron. He goes, did you tell him? He's like, remember. You know, Sauron looks at him and he's like, remember... You have history books of me and about magic, so it was just true. But he goes, and yes, I did tell him about myself a little. When well, you're sleeping and he's awake, I'm bored. Which he's like, uh, fair point. I'm not gonna deny that. So basically, you know, Naruto just says, okay, I'll be back in about probably an hour. I'm gonna go some. I'm gonna do some mining. My Nazgul, with the Nazgul and the Witch King on the Uzumaki Mountain. Uh, Karama, do you mind? Which, he just says, no, I don't mind. So Naruto touches his forehead as they can see the, the Uzumaki, you know, where it was, the mountain, the pathway to the actual mine. So let's just do a time skip after he just did the mining, though. Like, he says, bye, Third Hokage. And then, you know, just leaves. And then, you know, he just sighs. Haruzen's like, that boy's going to be some trouble. But, 
Uh, I like trouble in this little village sometimes. But he's a good type of trouble. So he just goes, and then he looks back at the paperwork. He goes, now, and he glares at it with a fury like no other. He's like, you, you stupid paperwork. Why won't you burn? I wish I could, I wish I could burn you, but I can't. Just combust already. So after that, he basically just, you know, he just goes back to doing his paperwork. Naruto, like I said, time skips after he's done mining. He goes, okay, this is this should be enough material, well, some ore, and huh? I mean, there's even some. Well, there's some, basically some regular silver and black ore, huh? I wonder what's gonna happen with this when it makes it into a sword. Hmm. Which Karama just says, "Trust me, kid. You'll be surprised." This is why I told you to come this part of the mountain. You know, part of the mountain. The ore here, even though it's silver, you know, it shines. It's very dense. The black ore, it's um, the one that will basically make it more unbreak, like be unbreakable. The silver, though, it gives it more of a lighter but flexible look to meld with. These both work in you know, both compositions to make it, well, way more, how should I say this? Which Naruto just says, way more easier to basically make into a weapon and forge. Which he goes, yeah, pretty much. He's like, good. So then after that, he basically looks at the Nazgul's and the Lich King. He goes like, thank you for all your help. I know this kind of is like, why aren't we doing this and we're not battling, but... <laughs> I don't want to technically use the chakra. I technically already have some shadow clones already doing the workout, training, and, well, finding ninjutsus, you know. So, I know I'm going to be tired afterwards. So, <laughs> but they all just look at him and like, we do not mind this, our lord. It's kind of a nice change of pace from killing, one of them says. And another one says, agreed. Hmm, to be fair, it's nice to see your homeland. Even though it was destroyed by three different nations, I know. <sighs> but, before we go, we're going to raid the Zamaki clan's library. Which they all just look at him and yell out, yes! Which Karama and Sarah are like, why? And then Arthur is like, the seal and jutsu, do you really think I'm going to leave them here for anyone to, else to take? That isn't there's a monkey that somehow gets into this compound in which they all which they both just think about it and go like, true. In which Omer says, excellent. But no, we need to talk about something. I saw something I did not understand. When um <clears throat> when you were basically in the well, when we were walking or slash in the shop. Forget. But she was like, okay. So basically, they go to the Uzumaki clan, um, he basically gets in, he just like, kind of just like, walks right through it. It wasn't even like a problem. And then he's like, so, let's search. So, after about 30 minutes to 20, because he's using Noggles and some Shadow Clones to help, along with Karama and Sauron, and, you know, using his Rake Vision, um, he basically, you know, finds the entrance to the Uzumaki clan's library. And when he gets there, he sees all these scrolls. He's like, oh my god, this is a lot of knowledge. But this is going to be fun. Oh man, I cannot wait to, to stick it to that chiha. <laughs> so after that, um, they basically gather all the scrolls and Naruto gets them into sections. And he does have like, you know, different type of scrolls. I mean, he does have like one scroll that he rolls out. And each section is put onto the onto the scroll in different areas. And so, he basically, they all have like seals on them. So where he basically puts some chakra into them, the scrolls get put into the seal. And then he writes down what they are. So it's like sealing, you know, sealing, you know, jutsus. Then basically it's like, you know, some elemental jutsus, tai jutsus. And funny enough, sword, um... Basically, um, I think it was like Kenjutsu. Yeah, I think it was called Kenjutsu. Basically, what they use sword and samurai, you know, in the samurai with Naruto universe. So basically, he writes that all down, rolls it up. He's like, "Well, maybe we can technically figure out what's that um, that curse slash seal they put on." Well, 
you know, used on that sword. I mean, the seal's on the sword, and the curse on me. Which Sauron does agree. And so, they basically get back to the, you know, the actual, you know, Konoha. And he arrives, though, in the alleyway with, um... By the way, the, also the material, the ores were basically in a scroll too. He, he, that's why I said he had like, you know, two like multiple scrolls on him. So basically, he put he basically walking into the well, Konoha. I mean, not walking into Konoha. He basically walks into the shop because he came out of the alleyway. And then he goes around, and the shop's just like right in front of him. So when he does go, he's like, "I'm back. I got them." That what you guys needed. So basically, he like unravels the actual scroll, pours a little bit of chakra. But when he's about to, he's like, "Wait, I need to go in the back in the forge." Which Ten Ten's father's like, "Um, yeah, I've just thought you came back, as, you know, as soon as you could." Which Ten Ten's like, "I bet it's not that much." So when they go into the back, he basically puts this, you know, actual scroll down, and which, well. What they see is they see a like a pile like, let's say it's all the way to their roof of the forge, which they are shocked by. He was like, <laughs> "I think you guys can use this, and I could get some money for it, um, to pay for the sword too." In which, ten times I was like, "You know what? It's free. You you gave me the material. Um, you gave me more than what I would need. So, you're good." Where do you get this from? He was like, oh, the old Uzumaki's clan ruin mountain. And which, he looks at him. He was like, you know how many people have tried to get there and failed? Hold on. Alright guys, I'm in my room right now. My parents got home. Anyways, um, as I was saying, you give, I mean, like, that, yeah, as I said, you know how dangerous that is. He was like, huh? Naruto looks at him, confused, tilting his head to the side. He's like, <clears throat> the wildlife there is... How should I say this? Different. He's like, oh. I see. Naruto says. He was like, yeah, I did not really care at all about them. And they did not care about me. Which, he's just like, uh. He's <laughs> so, like, yeah, don't worry. I'm fine. Anyways, um, do you think you can make a katana? You know? He's like, Hmm. A regular size one? He's like, yeah. Better keep it regular so that way I can get in, you know, used to it. He's like, I understand. I'll work on it as soon as I can. He's like, right. Anyways, see ya. Uh, you know, he sees Ten Ten. He's like, who are you? She goes, I'm Ten Ten. I'm a ninja. Konuichi. Probably above you? He's like, oh yeah, first year you mean, right? He goes, uh huh. I mean, you know, one year, I mean, ahead. She goes, yeah. He's like, okay. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Naruto is a maki. Which, she shakes his hand. And he goes, it's good to meet you. He says that same thing like she did. So, whatever that, he says, um, I'll be by in three days. If that's, you know, just let me know if that's a good enough time. I, you know, don't know if I'll be on a mission, but, you know, I'll try my best. Uh, see ya. As, you know, he basically leaves. So, it's Ted Ten's like, is the Uzumaki clan, you know, for the Uzumaki mountain really that dangerous to get to it? In which her dad just not. So, after that, Ted Ten makes a note. Don't ever mess with a Uzumaki. Especially this guy. So, basically, after that little thing, Naruto goes home. And when the, he does, he goes like, "Okay, Sauron, let's see what you want, you know, to you know see." In which he does not. So, basically, Sauron appears in front of him, you know, in real life, where everyone can see him, and start you know chanting some magic. As then, all of a sudden, Naruto's body glows for a few, let's say, fifteen minutes. As then, this is a death, you know, magical spell that would basically. Make sure whatever it is that you know he thinks is there reacts, and the fact is, after he's done, Sauron just chuckles, in which Naruto was like, "Um, Sauron, 
what's wrong? He's like, oh, my apologies, Naruto, but it seems those fools, well, may have done something that <laughs> may have been just so hilarious that it would have failed so easily. And when she was like, um, huh? He's like, well, allow me to explain. So, the ninjas that attacked you, they did have seals on the sword, as we both know. Which he does not. He was like, and then they start doing hand signs to activate the seal. That emitted a black aura around it. But, here's the thing. This was supposed to be a curse. Not a jutsu or a seal. The fact is that they modified it to where it worked this way was very, very unlikely. But it did. But the fact is that there's a lot more than they just did to the curse. You are still a Grave Walker, but you are much more than that. There's something, well, I mean, you are a Grave Walker, but there's more to than that I mean. There's so much more. It seems that your chakra pool will always increase anytime you die, and there's a barrier on your chakra pool. The chakra that you have is the one you've been training and working with all your life. And the fact is that it's, well, got even bigger now, it's <laughs> hilarious. Which Naruto does nod. He goes, is there anything else? He goes like, yes, actually. It seems that the seal on that sword basically, how should I say this, gave you something. Something where it awoke in your genes of a Uzumaki. Which Naruto's eyes are blinking. He's like, wait, like what? He goes, hmm. We'll have to see that. But I believe the seal accidentally did give, well, the curse slash seal did give you way more than just, you know, turn you into a Grey Walker, like I did say. I think it may have also, may have something to do with Karama. Which she was like, which Karma Yo does come in as a magical, like, little fox. He was like, wait, what about me? He was like, well, you two are inseparable. You know, as we both know. But after you're gone, he will die. Naruto, but since he's a Grey Walker, he'll come back to life. And Sauron keeps talking, as then he adds anybody, he goes like, but it seems like because you were, well, born from Kushina, the f whiskers may have seen you part of a fox, anyways, may have unlocked the you know, the Kiwi's chakra within you, as your own, I mean, because you were born within, you know, from Kushina, while she was still holding the QB, which then Naruto and Kurama eyes wanted, which then technically Kurama looks at him and was like, you're, you're part QB, or, so, this Naruto was like, wait, does that mean I'm a fox? Which... Then Solon just says, well, let's see. As then all of a sudden he touches Naruto's forehead, as all of a sudden, fox ears and ta a tail, like nine tails pop out. Which, Naruto, which then Kurama's like, don't start calling me dad. Please. Which then Naruto just looks at Kurama like, but your chakra did, <laughs> you, you accidentally did that. He was like, no, the seal within your mom did have my chakra, you know. He was like, oh, so like the excess chakra that is leaking through the seal, it, yeah, it bonded with you when you were just a, well, a baby. You know. He's like, yeah, I got it. I got it. So, Naruto's like ears and tails disappear. He's like, so I am a, fo I am part QB. Which then sort of goes like, Oh, well, Karama, it looks like your well, the sage of six paths is, can be finally be glad he has a grandson. Which then Karama looks at me like, I'm not ready to be a dad. <laughs> Which then he was like, you're not even a dad, Naruto says. You're just a, well, someone inside, basically sealed inside of me. It, it was unfair, but, oh, God. If my mom was here in this, she would be freaking out. I should probably go over to the Uzumaki compound. Or the, well, Namikaze. 
Oh, we have to go tell the third Okage I'm back. And which, you know, someone does agree. So, when they basically, you know, get over there, he's like, Horizon, I'm back. Also, um, funny thing. Uh, we might want to have some Ambu, you know, leave. As Harun and does not, they just leave. Donzo's guy was never there anyways. So he's like, what's wrong? He's like, Sauron, can you explain to him? He's like, yes. So basically, he just says, tells him about how, basically, since Naruto was still part of Kushina, when, you know, the seal was there, some of Kurama's chakra became a part of Naruto while he was, well, you know, you know, he says to Aruzen, and he's like, so you're telling me the boy has the Kurama's chakra, I and mean, the Kiwi's chakra, but it's what it's a part of him, to the point where he actually made him into part Kiwi, which then he nods. So, Naruto's a soul, I'm technically the living version of the QB, but as his son. Heh <laughs> uh, I wonder why I, per I started the like, pern that one time. Which then, like... Like, Horizon just looks at me like, wait, you, you can purr? Okay, like, yes. But... I don't know how it happened, but it just happened when this girl with purple hair that was tied up like Shikamaru's with a, well, with tan jacket and shorts just came up and hugged me when I was little in the forest. And then all of a sudden she started like rubbing my cheek and I just started purring by accident. That, that, that kind of explains it. In which her ruse and just kind of chuckles. Anything, anyways, he has, he basically tells himself, I had to ask Anko, what, purple hair. The only one who wears a tan jacket and shorts is Anko, so yeah. I'll have to ask Anko how, like, the reaction and how he basically escaped from her. So, after that, he was like, oh, let me guess, you also, you also, you also want the Namikaze, you yep, can I please live there? It's like, you're on boo, and technically getting, so, eh, why not? Here's the keys, here's the papers, here's everything that your parents wanted to give me. Now please leave, I got paid my work. I didn't know just looked at him and was like, Why not use multi shadow and Jutsu? They basically give you the memories of the paperwork. Which Haruto just looks at him and just hit his head on the desk three times. Like, why I didn't think of that. So he just does it. He's like, now, all of you, please do the paperwork for me. As they all just nod, they just do it. He's like... Thank you, Naruto. I wish Naruto just nods and just leaves. So, after that, he um he finds where the Namikaze compound is, and he says, I'll move in tomorrow. After I meet uh, Team Asuma. Yeah, that's his name. Asuma. I don't care about the team name. Probably Team 10 or something. Eh. So, he just walks away. He goes back to his old house. And he releases the clones very slowly. And it's because he's on the bed. As soon as he does that, after like five minutes, after like, not five minutes, five seconds later, Naruto's sleeping. So, after that, he wakes up. And, well, simple. He does his own routine. He basically just wears some, like, normal, like, clothing that he basically unlocks from, his, from the scroll. And it, it is mostly like Ambu, so I mean the mom the pants have like a lot of pockets and he does like keep a jacket, you know, on him because of well it's just good to hide his face sometimes. And plus he just has the boots on. So basically he's just walking after he eat breakfast to where he meets he needs to meet Azuma Inko not Inko not Inko, um you know. Yeah, sorry, just my mind went somewhere else. <laughs> Eno and Choji. Basically, when he you know, gets to the training ground, uh, Azuma is like, hmm, so you're Naruto, my father told, you know, told me about. He's like, yep, Naruto is a Maki. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's like, yeah. Which, Eno is like, thinking, what? He's here? And he goes, so... How good are you? It's like, I'm Ambu. 
I've been on a couple missions by myself. Actually, no, not a couple. I've been on only missions by myself. So, I'm pretty good. Which, Asuma does not. He was like, well, so you have to be a part of the team. And then, he's like, nah, I'm technically still getting. It's good to well, learn about teamwork since I'm by myself. So, Choji, what's up, man? Which, Choji's like, nothing much. You? He's like, N nothing really. Anyways, how's Shikamaru? He's like, well, he kind of hates being with, well, the two... How should I say? The two couples. Which he does in the third day, like, no fun in paradise with them. He's like, no, they're just annoying to him. Especially Sakura. Which he does not. He's like, do you hear from Kiva? He's like, oh yeah. Him and her, him and Hanato really had a fallen out. He's like, really? What happened? Kiva. Something about, you know, he just, he thought it would be good to be with her, but after dating for so long, for a while, it was like, not even worth it, he said. He says, did he cheat on her? He was like, no, no, they just argued. So yeah, he's like, ah, well that must have sucked for him. And basically, he was like, yeah, I mean, I heard her father basically didn't even like the guy anyway, so he was happy about it. Which, basically, Naruto does not. He, and they listen to Eno. He goes, how's your shop doing, Eno? She goes, good, you? He goes, meh, I'm fine, nothing really special. Since I found out about who my parents were. In which Asuma looks at him, and he, basically Naruto did turn around to look at Asuma, and he goes like, my dad, you know, he just nod. He goes, the council's not gonna like this. He goes, and Naruto just looks at him and goes like, who cares? I mean, the council can just die for all I care, really. I don't want to try to make my life a living pain and suffering, so. The ninja, the ninja council's alright, just the counselors aren't. I heard Sakura's mom is on the council. Hmm. Which, he basically gets a slight evil grin, but then he goes, Nah, she's not worth it. Not worth my time, really. Which, everyone just, some, I mean, basically you can just hear someone's trying to not snicker at this. Which is Eno, which Osmos just look at her. And so, he was like, okay, so, what missions are we doing? He was like, well, we're going to be doing some demon missions, and then, well, since you're new to the whole entire training with teammates, that's where we're gonna learn. It's like, cool. Let's get, to, let's get these done. So basically, they do about like four D ranks, and then the training is just teamwork, just to you know, team exercise building and try to get to know each other. And what Ina finds out about Naruto is shocking, like really shocking. She thought he was not good at like most things. I mean, she knew he was good at, like, you know, studying, I mean, smart, Konai throwing and everything else, but nothing about, like, the, like, how should I say this? They were, one of the missions was trying to get the cat and, you know, like, Tora the cat, basically. And she was shocked at, like, how he was able to, like, have the cat be so, like, you know, let, basically, Admin going, you know, with him. Which, and basically the knowledge of their teamwork with, how should I say this, like, how do you... Basically, it's like a, cra a contraption Asma used just to try to get them to do t team building. And to see what Naruto knows. In which... Yeah. So, after that... Naruto will basically go back to his home. And... Well... He later just shows up Shadow Clone Jutsu. And the Nazgul's do come out and say, allow us to like help with this. So, basically... They do get, like, everything packed up. They basically went to get some boxes, got everything packed up, and they all went to the Namikaze compound. Now the ghouls do with the boxes while Naruto, you know, just walked all the way over there. It was a monkey slash Namikaze compound, basically, I would just say, really, but, yeah. So, you know, he gets, he basically unlocks the seal, he gets in, he locks it, and goes to the door, 
And he basically sees everything what Kushina and Minato had. And he chuckles at this. And then he just sighs. He's like, well, here we go. So, after this, Naruto looks around the place and he finds everything. Alright, he finds everything that the, well, what they had there. He even found the library that Kushina had, even, you know, Minato's, you know, jutsus, her seals, Kushina seals and everything. In which, well, Naruto's, you know, seeing a picture of, you know, both his parents and he just, you know, kind of tears up at this. Sauron just, you know, puts his hand on his shoulder and be like, they'll be proud of you. I know it. Which, he does nod. He's like, thanks. He goes, now then, let us, well, add the scrolls to the library, which Naruto does not. So, he does that, and then he makes the Shadow Clones, in which he basically has them, you know, read in the Taijutsu, well, the Sealing Scrolls first, and, you know, practicing them. In which, they do that for all night, and the next, well, how should I say it, the next three days happen, Shikamaru is with, you know, Team 7. They're, you know, they're having a hard time, but Naruto with, you know, Team Asuma, it's going pretty good. Naruto even went, came back three days, you know, as he said, to Ten Ten's father's, like, shop. Even, like, he even saw Ten Ten in the village sometimes and said hi to her and talked. And so, you know, uh, by the way, Naruto in Sealand, he's only, like, level... One. He he only became level one on the second day of practicing, so yeah. So basically, after you know he going you know to the workshop, he sees Ten Ten's father. He goes like, um, "Excuse me." Which then Ten Ten's father is like, "Ah, oh, Naruto, <laughs> come in." He's like, "So how's the?" He was like, "It's done." I might have like. Hmm, how should I say this? I might have did something that you may be very impressed with. As Naruto was right. So they go into the back. As Naruto sees the sword. Basically, it's an all black sword with basically silver, like, edge. And what it looks like for the guard, it looks like a nine tails. It's like, even its own, like, you know, how would the snake eat its own tail? From Ragnarok, basically, it's like that. Like, when you know, say Kurama is trying to eat his own tail, which Naruto is like, wow. And he can just see, like, the whole entire, how should I say this, the grip, along with the butt of the sword, is very well done. He basically kept it black, you know, for the grip. Basically, for the, um, how should I say this, not thread, but cloth that would basically be on it and gave it like a silver a very dark silver for the butt and the guard and stuff just so that it would not reflect off of the sun and the sheath is basically is from the metal too as it's basically just all black which he does look and note was like I had enough material to make it out of this well this sheath out of the, well, the metal well the scraps of it at least and which Naruto goes, <laughs> wow. So he picks up the sword. It is light, but it still has weight to it. You and he does swing it. You know, a little after he tells you know Tenten's father to move away, and which he does, and he swings it. He basically can tell that he's not giving very good with this as he was with his one ninja sword, but a little bit of practice and training, he could probably work into his own way. Also, there's those Kenjutsu style swordsman techniques I have from. Well, the scrolls from the Uzumaki clan. Hmm. I should probably put some... Cl I know I did... I have, like, already... 200... Like, not too much, right? 150 clones working on the first... Well, working on... Was working on the first level... And the second. And the seconds are about to be done soon. Now they're on the third and fourth. I'll have to make some more clones later. So, you know, after that... You know, ten times part does it... 
which Naruto puts the sword at the Shishifu was like, yet yeah, everything's fine. Don't worry. Um, is there anything I need to know about the mater the metal? He was like, oh yes. Um, the ma I didn't I didn't realize it until well, after I grabbed it. But the metal is actually can absorb chakra. It seems that it can well use elemental attacks within the sword. Like if you use wind style on it, it would well, case the sword in wind, and you'll be able to make certain techniques with it. Even probably jutsus without using any hand signs. In which Naruto was shocked by this, and he was thank you for the information. Are you sure I don't have to pay you? He was like, no, look. And he sees, like, the mountain's still there. He was like, I have enough material here to last me for a while. But, I have a feeling this ain't supposed to be used for anyone else besides an Uzumaki. So, the swords are free. If you need anything else, I'll make it for you out of this. Okay? Which, he was like, are you sure? This could make you, he was like, I can't go back to the Uzumaki mountain and to get the mining done with anyone from Konoha. So, how about I use all this material to make you whatever else you need? Which, Naruto does not, I didn't say thanks. Anyways though, see ya. As Naruto, you know, run out of the, well, basically the shop as Tenta and Fargo was like, <laughs> Kushina, Minato, if only you can see your son now. He's a spinning image. So, after that, you know, Ten Ten, you know, comes back and goes like, Hey, Dad, did Naruto get the sword? Which he does nod. And which was cool. So, what are you doing with all that? Basically, he explained to her what he explained to Naruto. She goes, Are you sure? I mean, they're not around, but... I mean, I can see a reason why it would be better for him to have it than the village. I mean, technically speaking, it is better. Which he does nod. So, after that, Naruto... Wow. He basically the train was in the afternoon, so he basically arrived with Asuma, Choji, and Eno. Eno has over these three days hasn't watched Naruto and you know and basically trying to see what he's really like. And now she's gonna ask the opportunity to hang out with him. So though, basically when he arrives, Asuma sees the sword. He was like, Huh? Where do you get that? He was like, Oh, well, my sword was Breaking, well, my ninja sword. This is something I had made. It's, well, like what the samurais use. Katanas. In which, Asuma looks, you know, at the whole entire sword that's still in the sheath. He goes like, well, it looks very well done. So, we're going to be doing some training today. No missions. Alright, which, they all nod. So, Asuma says, alright. I know I should probably be teaching you guys this, but Naruto, do you know tree walking and water walking? He goes, yeah. Um, do you want me to help them? He, which, technically, Asma nods. He goes, please. Yeah, please, can you help them? I can give some instructions to them, but they'll have to figure it out on their own, but if they come to any trouble, would you? He goes, yeah. I don't mind. So, basically, Eno and Choji are learning tree walking. Asuma does ask, you know, while he's basically, Naruto standing next to Asuma, Asuma asks him, so, what elemental, do you, you know, what, am, what elemental jutsus do you think they have? Which, Naruto goes like, hmm, don't know for sure. But I do have some, wait, no, I don't have any chakra paper on me. Wait, I can go to the third Hokage. And then he makes a shock, you know, and basically he asks it to go to the third Hokage. In which it does. So, he goes, thanks again, Naruto. He's like, no problem. But, why did you want me to... Hold up. Alright, why did you even want me on your team? Anyways. Which, Asuma just be like, well, first off, this village has been treating you like crap ever since you were born. And secondly, you seem different. So, I just want to know, how different are you? And which, well... Naruto just looks at him with a slight chuckle. He's like, you have no idea. So basically, Ino and Choji do have trouble at first, which Naruto does help them, giving them some advice, advice, which it does help. 
And then, well, after that, Naruto and, you know, Choji and Ino, you know, do get along pretty well after this. Which, then he basically tells them, he shows them their well, ninja type. Let's just say, you know, is water. Choji is earth. Naruto says he has all five. He basically teaches them some jutsus. In which they thank him. So, he does teach them a few jutsus, but they're going to take a while for them. But he does tell them how to increase the chakra reserves if they ever need it. In which, you know, to keep as often in their chakra until they're tired. Like, he doesn't mean, like, tired, tired. He says, like, sweating, you know, sweating and tired. Like, you feel like you're about to puke. His ch your chakra recoil will technically break and it will hurt. So, don't redo it. Which they do not. Eno, though, does ask him, can we hang out? He's like, really? She goes, yeah, just... We get to know you. Which, no, I don't think so. He was like, eh, you're not as bad as I thought from the academy. Guess you grew up a little bit. So why not? Which, she does look at Naruto with a smile. And so, basically leave while Asuma goes like, what's that about? Which Shoji just says, well, every girl in the academy besides on not that thought Naruto was, well, well, technically in our class, I mean, was technically useless and nobody. And Sasuke was better. People started bullying at him. Ever since he was, well, I guess, basically, when we were 10, truly, two years ago, he changed. He never really liked Sakura. No one thought he did. After everyone learned it was an act, it was... Hard to believe this season was Naruto that they thought. But in the end, you know, Shikamaru knew him for his real self. I guess Eno just wants to fix it. Because technically one one our well, one of the people Naruto helped when he was a kid was Sakura and Eno, along with Hanata. But they all treated him like crap. At least Eno's trying to fix it. Which you know, Asuma does not. So, you know, and Naruto just really just hang out. They talk. They go to a restaurant. Um, you know, she has house on Ambu. He just says, trust me, your definition of a ninja and what your dad makes it out to be, you would rather not know. In which she goes, that bad. He's like, no, just a lot of death. And a lot of killing. Sorry, if you thought it was me, like, hey. He goes, no, 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 no. I, I knew that, but it's like, um, how bad, it's like, sometimes it's, well, groups of people, it can be brutal, that's all, I'm not gonna explain no more, she goes, right, right, so, then though, they kind of go to different topics, until, she, you know, look, she finally, she basically just looks at him, it was, you know, two years back, by the way, this is like them walking, and they're sitting down in the park, they were sitting down in the park when she asked us, she was, what do you mean two years back? He goes, remember that well, little thing that Sasuke said to you in school the next day? He goes, after the incident. She goes, wait, what incident? He's like, um, oh, yeah, well, I'm only going to find a little bit of things. You see, when I was, well, waiting for Sakura in the woods, some ninjas, rogue ninjas, came at me. And I was being chased by them. Ambu were following them, and I ran for hours and hours on end. And, well, I tripped over something and fell into a cave. Well, more like I broke the seal on a cave. <laughs> and I found something there. But that's when everything changed for me. She goes, wait, what do you mean everything changed? As Naruto just says, if you knew what I was now, you would think I'm a freak. You really would think I'm a freak. You know, I'm not going to tell you. If you want to know, you have to earn my trust. And, well, after two years, you, um... 
or should I say a year after that, you started to change. Stop liking Sasuke, no matter how many times you tried to convince him to go out with you. Well, to see, to show that he, you were better than Sakura. Which you are, actually. And Eno's you know, kind of blushing a little bit from that, but he was like, but... After everything? I mean, I, see, I helped you and Sakura a long time ago. Then we meet each other again in the academy, and... What happens? You treat me like I was a nobody and a well, monster. Just because of these villagers. How stupid. As he just gets up with his hands in his pocket, and he's like, Well, I'm gonna get home. See ya. As she, you know, she's just looking at Naruto, and while she's looking at his, at, you know, her, his back, she does remember him helping her out. When, you know, she was lost. You know, and this one time that was so when, you know, her and Sakura were playing tag. And in the end, she just acted like nothing ever happened. So, she does cry over that. And, you know, basically she doesn't, she just like saying, why does it hurt? You know, basically. While Naruto is like, you know, walking away. You know, he can technically feel the emotions of Eno, his guilt and pain, and he just wonders why. Hmm. Whatever. I really don't get the concept of it no more. I didn't want people's acknowledgement, but... Actually... I guess I don't understand why she feels like she's in pain. Just because of me, did I hurt her feelings that badly? Or did I... <laughs> did I hurt something that she doesn't even know about? Or do I? Which Sauron... Wait, hold on. Okay, which Sauron does say to him? You are still young. And besides, this village has made your heart a little bit cold and... Immune to feeling emotions sometimes. And also because of me... I had no emotions towards anyone. So, it would only be natural. As Kurama says, yeah, I agree. Don't worry about it, kid. Would you just, I know. So, after, you know, them saying that, Naruto walks by a store, and he notices something in it that's kind of shocking to him. He basically sees a bow. And he has made a bow and used it, but it's like he sees a bow there, and basically, he, you know, someone has told him about, like, the elves crafting, you know, crafting weapons and how they made their bows and such, which, Naruto was like, that's an elven bow. How has that even survived? I know they've, they're made to last for no matter how long it's been, but... So, Naruto rushes to the store, and then he goes, like, to, to the person at the counter, he's like, Sir, how much is that bow? In which... The guy looks at him, and he goes like, and you know, it's glares at him, but when he said that, he's like, oh, uh, you want it? He's like, he just nods, he's like, which kind of shocks him, he's like, um, well, um, not many people want to buy, and I even, down the price, don't want to be like a thousand Ryu, I mean not a thousand, like ten Ryu. As Naruto literally just takes out Wally and pulls out like one, one like twenty thousand Ryu. Is is this enough? Which the guy's like, uh, dude, I mean, I would have asked for more, but uh, yeah, that that's fine. Which Naruto goes over to the bow and you know picks it up. He was like, wait, do you have arrows for this too? Which he goes like, yeah, that's an extra three thousand. Which he takes it out and puts on it. Which the guy's just like. How much money does the demon have? Eh. I mean, I should really stop calling him a demon if he asked politely for this. <sighs> so, after Naruto, you know, gets the arrows and the bow, you know, he's walking back to his to the Namikaze compound. And so, when he gets back, he basically, you know, Says, we have to target practice. I haven't used one in over about 
five months. I wonder if my skills are still rusty. I wonder if my skills have gotten rusty. Hold on. All right. Tell him how much he needs. So, after that, he grins and he basically does go down to the basement. He does find the lever, and then, like, after that, there was like a door that leads to a, a dojo to test out stuff, you know, like fire techniques. So, he basically, though, makes some shadow clones and tells them to basically, you know, practice the Kenjutsu, you know, swordsman, swordsman fire that the Uzumaki clan uses. And then he goes over to, like, the clones that are basically using sealant. He was like, so, how's everything? He's like, the, basically, second-level clones saying they pretty much got it down. They've just been, like, making sure they understand it properly. The third and fourth saying we're almost done. Which he was like, huh, cool. So, he basically, though, just says... He has the ones with that doing the second level. He's like, do you, do you guys still think you need a little more time, or... Which then all of them just look at you like, to be honest, it's just getting boring. We've been doing this like the repeating of it like for like three hours, so it's probably good. Which then he nods and they basically dispel. Then basically he makes more shadow clones. He was like, all right, look at the well, taijutsu styles of the you know taijutsu fight and stuff, and you know which they say and we'll basically we'll well practice it for a couple of hours or two. To make sure of it, right? He was like, yeah. So, that's what they do. They basically, each one takes a scroll and, you know, practices Taijutsu. And let's just skip about... Yeah, let's just skip to the next day. Because it was like, you know, it just took a nap anyways. I'm, I'm kind of making this short because I want this to upload as soon as I can. So basically... Naruto, though, next day, Asuma, him, and, well, Ino, and Choji, basically go to the Hokage because they got urgent news. Which, in surprise, uh, when Asuma says, I'm Hokage, hey, Hokage, what is it? As then he basically, Haruza says, I need to go assist Team 7. Seems like there's, well, attempt on the bridge builder's life by a man called Gato. In which Naruto's eyes widen. And basically that caused Haruzen's eyes, you know. Well, well eyes starts to take up note of the Naruto. He's like, Naruto, what's wrong? He's like, oh, nothing. I just have some guys on the inside. <laughs> uh, man, this would be easy then if it's just for what he's planning to do to the bridge builder. In which they're like, huh? He's like, oh, I know about the bridge builder only like three months ago. So it's not like, you know. I knew about him gonna come to Konoha. I just knew of his assistance. In which Horizon does not. And he's like, anyways, go since Team 7. And they're like, right. Basically, though, they kind of dealt with the whole entire, like, Zavaza thing. Or, but they dealt with the whole entire Zavaza. I mean, Team Kashi is already new with that. But I am technically gonna end the video right here because I'm looking at the time right now. Um, even though my parents got back not that long ago, um, my dad said he wanted to go out later. He was going to need me, so I'm going to have to go right now anyways. So you hope you guys can understand. Have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye.